here we have your setup. You can see it's pretty simple. We just have a funnel and scales and filter paper and stuff. The uh, glassware should be clean. If it looks like that, that's not worth using. So we want to keep good clean glassware. Here's the uh, Miracle Grow that you guys will be using. And when you dole it out, it looks something like that. Um, mix it together using a stir rod. And the uh, Epsom salts are actually the magnesium sulfate we'll be using. You need to make a 10% solution of that. So since you have to measure out the mass of the MgOSO4, that means that you have to get the mass of the water too. So put the water, the graduated cylinder filled with water on there to get its mass. And then uh, you can measure it out. Use a pipette to change the volume if you need to so that you can get it down to the proper mass. So you have 90% water and 10% magnesium sulfate. In this picture, you can see that both of these are on. You only need to have the stir stirring in there. There's a stir rod in there that you can put in there to mix that up so that you can get a magnesium sulfate ready to go. When it's sat out and separated after you've added the, the ammonia hydroxide to it, it'll turn into this solution. This is why it needs to set. You need to get this layer so that you can um, really get a good separation easy. So here we have the proper lab technique for pouring this out. Notice how I'm decanting it really carefully and pouring it down the stir rod so it goes directly into the funnel. And I'm not trying to get the two to mix together. I really want that top layer to separate out first. That way I can get a really quick, fast run through of the material before it gets... Um, clogged up with the actual material that's inside the stuff that we're looking for. You can't see it really from this angle, but the funnel is touching the side of the beaker. This is really important. We've run this in the past and it's run really, really super slow. I think one of the reasons that it's run slow is that the surface tension for the, for the material helps pull the liquid through. And so now we're getting down to the actual solid particulates that are in there. And you can see that it's slowing down considerably. It's really super important not to overtop the filter because the filter paper is there for a reason. If the filter paper is not um, attached really well, then the, the material will slip by and you'll end up with stuff down at the bottom. And I'll have to repeat this by filtering it through several times. So at this point, I pull the stir rod out. You probably should have done that beforehand. But pull it out with a magnetic stir rod remover. Make sure that you get all of the material off. And then put it someplace safe so that you can rinse it off and take care of it properly. Now all I have left is the solid particulates down at the bottom. The filtrate that I want to get out. So now I gradually pour this through. This part takes a little while. The whole process took only about 20 minutes. That's not typically the case though, so if it takes longer, don't feel frustrated or discouraged. Again, the critical part there is making sure that you let those two layers separate out. It'll go much, much faster if you can do that. So I've got a little bit of distilled water out because once I get done pouring this out, I want to get the rest of those particulates out that are stuck in the bottom of the beaker. So I have a distilled bottle, um, wash bottle back there. And once I get done pouring this in, you'll see me clean it out.
So rinse the glass to rot. That's just to remove any residue off of it. There's a few little chunks that are on the side there. You can use the rubber policeman to help pull those off. And then most of it's just washing it around, rinsing it down to the bottom. The procedure says to take the filtrate from the bottom too and run it back through. If you need to, you can do that. In this case, it came out pretty clear. I don't know if I'd waste my time doing it a second time. Here I've skipped some spots. Um, you need to be careful because you're supposed to wash this off with ethanol. That'll help dry the material. It helps get rid of the water. But I'm using the rubber placement to pick the side of the filter off from the wall. I just find a loose spot to do that. It's going to take some time. Um, once you get that pulled loose, you can help the um, help move it and keep it from sticking back on there. Put the glass stir rod in between it and the filter and just peel it away, working methodically all the way around the side. And then I've got some forceps, you can't see them yet. But you want to lift it up by the side that has the three folds on it, not the single fold. That's quite a bit of material, so if you lift it up by the single fold, there's a good chance you'll rip your filter paper. So then I just lift it up, and there's a watch glass sitting right there. I'm going to set that on. You want to make sure you number your watch glass before you plop it on there. We're going to speed things up by putting it in an incubator. So just lay it on there, on the watch glass in the incubator. Make sure the door is closed. And then make sure that it's turned to low temperature. You don't want it all up to 10. You'll set fire to the stuff inside. That's it. Thanks.